Hi there! My name is Neil Blevins, and this tutorial is called Matching Lighting Direction in a Photo Bash. So for years now, people have been using photo bashing techniques to add details to their concept paintings. I mean, why paint every leaf on a tree when you can take a photo of a tree and fit into your painting? But while photo bashing is a valuable tool for the modern artist, it can also be used for evil instead of good. So case in point, if I'm mixing multiple photos in the same painting, I need to make sure that the lighting direction is the same for all images I bring together. I mean, if you're just doing a super quick sketch that you plan on just showing a couple of people on your team to give them the general idea, then, you know, this extra step is probably not necessary. But if you're going to include photobash elements in your portfolio, or in a final painting for a client, consistent lighting direction is a must. So in this tutorial, I'm going to do a quick photobash, show you the problem, and then present a few different solutions to fix the problem. So to start off, I just want to show you the three photos that we're going to be using. So uh, the fr these, all these photos are from my trip to Utah, which I took a number of years ago. And this is going to be the ground. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take uh, two rock formations and put them here and here. And the rock formations are going to be this photo here and this photo here. So here we are in Photoshop. And um, just to speed things up for this ground plane, I've already extracted it from the sky. So I have these on two separate layers. And then here's our two rocks. So first step is to extract this from the sky, which is pretty straightforward because the sky is a pretty uniform blue color. And I'm just going to use the magic wand tool to grab it. Then I'll do an inverse to grab just the rock. So I'll skip this little over here. Okay, and then I'll drop this in here. And then let's go get this one here. Okay, and then let's just get rid of this little extra bit of rock over here. There we go. So we now have our two rocks um, in this composition and you can see the problem already. Like if we just assume that this ground, you can see there's sort of darkness over here on these parts of the rock of the ground. So um, our sun is over here somewhere, maybe even um, a little bit behind camera and uh, off to the left. And if we look at our first rock here, that matches pretty well. You know, we got our dark over here and then we have our dark over there. But if we look at the second rock formation, this guy here really doesn't work because all the dark stuff is on this side. So all the dark is on the left and the light stuff is on the right. Whereas over here, the dark is on the right and the light is on the left. And I've seen images like this before that people hand in uh, for, for things where the lighting is totally opposite here and it really detracts from the painting. So now we're going to look at uh, different ways we can solve this problem. So before we match the lighting direction here, um, the first thing I see is that this particular piece of rock here is a lot lighter on the light side than this one is. So just to start off, let's just fix that problem. So I'm going to go in and do a new adjustment layer, um, a levels, and then I'm going to do a, a clipping layer. And what this means is that this will only affect the layer that's below it. And you get, you get that by clicking on the line between the two layers and holding Alt. And now I'm going to go and adjust this. And I think if I just pull down the brightness a little bit, I think that will probably do it. Okay, and then the other thing I'm noticing is that this it seems to be a little yellower than this is. So let's fix that as well. So I'm going to add another adjustment layer. Put a hue saturation. And then I'm going to pull this a little redder. And it's a little saturated, so let me just bring down the saturation a little bit. So very subtle numbers here, but that matches that guy a lot better. So now let's go after the big problem, which is the lighting direction. 
So I'm going to outline four different techniques and show you how you can use each of these techniques to um, solve the lighting direction issue that we have in our painting. So the first one is the simplest one, and that is we could just take this rock and flip it. So if we go to transform and flip horizontal, you can see that the two lighting directions match. Now, it's not perfect. You know, I, I would probably go in and adjust the lightness of this a little bit more to match this a little bit more carefully, but that is usually the easiest way to solve these problems, especially if there isn't a perspective issue by flipping these uh, two objects. Now this image is a little different than before, and uh, what I've done is that the ground here has been flipped horizontal, so now the lighting direction, instead of coming from the left, is coming from the right. And so in this situation, I want to keep the, the same lighting here, because this lighting matches with the light hitting it on this side and the shadow being on this side, and I want to fix this guy here. Now, as I just showed you, of course, I could take this um, particular image and I could flip it, but maybe I like the fact that there's this skinnier bit over here and there's a thicker bit over here and I don't want that to uh, I don't want that to change I don't want the silhouette to change and the silhouette of course would totally change if I went and I did a, a straight flip on this like that so another technique you can use is to flip only parts of the image and the best way to do that is to duplicate this layer do a clipping mask. So now this bottom layer, all that's happening is that this bottom layer is, is sort of defining the transparency, the silhouette, and this top layer is the color that's going to be on top of it. And now I can do a selection, like just select this little part here, and I can flip just that part. And so now this has consistent lighting direction with the uh, part that is over here. And you'll note, of course, that there's a little bit of a, a problem here. You can see this edge. And again, that's because it's it's uh, showing through to the object below it. But that's something you can easily fix with the clone brush. Something like that. And then I would do the same for this portion over here. And for the errors here, I would do the same thing. I would use a, the clone brush to, to get rid of that, um, the, the weird artifacts between the two. But that's a way that you can quickly match the light uh, without changing the silhouette of the object below by um, horizontally rotating the entire thing, uh, flipping the entire thing. Instead, I'm only flipping parts of it and using the bottom layer as a mask. So technique number three is to actually paint in better lighting. And depending on how large the object you're trying to fix the lighting on is in your scene, um, you don't even necessarily have to do a really detailed job to make this happen. So let me just um, sample the, the shadow color here. And then I can start painting in the shadow. And conversely, painting away the shadow from the light side. So of course when you're doing this, um, depending on how much detail you need, you might want to do something much more complex than this. Like you might want to use the clone brush to clone elements around, or um, get some really detailed texture brushes, go in really close and and really make it perfect. But in some cases, like let's say that instead of this being a, a big element in the painting, let's say that it's actually a very small element. You know, looking at it from this distance, and if you squint your eyes, this kind of looks okay. This looks like it's generally the correct lighting, even though the, the details are not terribly good if you zoom in. So there's some instances where this kind of technique of just painting in um, the, the different lighting can do the job. And the final technique is to do a more detailed relight using adjustment layers. So let's get rid of that painting I did. And just to make this visually simpler, let me just collapse all this. 
Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a selection. It can be rough at first, and you can make it more detailed later if you need it. And then I'm going to do an adjustment layer. So I'm going to start with the levels. Put this guy into a group. We're going to call this shadow. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that this only appears on this guy down here. And so what I do is I hit control on this layer, and that gets me the opacity of that layer. And then if I click on the shadow group here, I can click on this, which will now create the, the opacity of this is now going to be the opacity of anything that's inside of the shadow layer. So let's go to our levels. And I'm going to pull this to be kind of dark. Now, you'll note that while this is darker, it doesn't look quite the same as this, and that's because there's a couple of other things going on. If you look here, this is actually um, quite uh, saturated. And by taking this, the darkness down here this way, it is not actually ad adding much saturation over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a, another adjustment layer, hue saturation. And instead of this mask, I'll delete the layer mask, I'm going to give it the same mask as down here. And now I'm going to increase this saturation. And let's see, do I need to, yeah, I'm going to pull it a little, a little red or two. So now if we look at this and this, it's looking pretty similar to each other. And of course I would go in and I would adjust this mask so that it looks better than just um, the selection I did, uh, but it should give you the general idea. And now we want to do the same kind of thing, except we want to do it to the light side. So leave that, call this light. And let's get rid of these masks. And now we select the dark parts here. And we'll start with this layer here, the levels. And uh, again, we'll hit the make a mask from selection. And instead of making this darker, we will make it lighter. Okay, then I'll turn on this guy here. And um, if I control click on this mask, it gives me the same mask. And then I can copy it to here. And then instead of these values, let's adjust this. Maybe something like that. So there you go. And much like the last one, you know, it's not perfect. It just took me a couple of minutes to set up the basics, but then I can go in and I can um, adjust these masks so that they're more form fitting and get a better final, re final result that looks a lot closer to the lighting that's over here. So here's my final result after about 10 minutes more work. And um, all I did was I refined these masks a little bit more to uh, really accentuate the parts that needed uh, to go dark and light. And then I did one layer here, which is just uh, a mixture of a little bit of hand paint and a little bit of clone tool to make sure everything looks consistent. So next time you do a photo manip, make sure to do a pass where you check that all the lighting is all coming from a consistent direction. It's a little extra work and it'll take a little extra time, but the end results, I think you'll agree, will really be worth it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope uh, you found this interesting. And uh, feel free to go to neilblevins.com and go to the art education section for more tutorials. And uh, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and it will let you know the next time I post a new video tutorial. Thank you very much.